grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we gather here this afternoon, this evening, to thank the Lord for all the gifts that He's given to us the gift of our faith and the gift of precious life. Let us now acknowledge our sins to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us of our sins, Christ have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood, Lord have mercy. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Honor, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the one of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we open our hearts to the liturgy of the Word for guidance and direction. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princes said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are living in this city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Malchiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebed Melech, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault in all that they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. Then the king ordered Ebed Melech the Cushite to take two men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners, in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're all called to be disciples of Christ. Now, when we are called, is we are called by God, not because, in a sense, God is saying, oh, this is a nice person, or I want him, I'm choosing him because of maybe his looks or the way he reacts to people. Okay. Discipleship, Christian discipleship, is not a popularity contest. We need to remember, when we are chosen by Christ, there is a cost that's involved by being chosen. He wants us to follow Him, to go out in the world, and even in our own little community and evangelize and preach his teachings, the teachings of Christ. And if we follow him the way he wants us to follow him, we ultimately will 
be led to the kingdom of heaven. And that's our destination when we come into the world. He wants us to evangelize the truth. The truth with the capital T. That he began to evangelize by himself and then through his disciples, apostles, over 2,000 years ago. And he wants us, when we are, to go out into the world and preach his teachings. He's saying to us, never, never apologize for your faith. Never apologize for the truth. And never shrink from doing your duty, living out your faith. We must always, you and I, speak the truth, even when we know there will be pushback. And we live in a society today that we are following Jesus. They want to say to us, you must be crazy. You must be out of your mind to follow this man's teaching teaching of love, the teaching of giving of oneself to others, taking care of the needy, the poor, the widow, the orphan. You need to think just of yourself, and that's what our society is all about today. But that's not why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He came really, as we hear in today's gospel, to set the earth on fire, to stir up things. And he says in today's gospel that households will be torn apart. They'll be divided. Father against son, son against father, daughter against mother, mother against daughter, because someone won't accept his teaching his beliefs, the teachings of Christ. We have a good example from the Old Testament of someone who followed the calling of God the Father. God the Father sent Jeremiah into fires, one might say, if you want to call it fires of hell almost, to the people of Israel. He faced resistance and even persecution for preaching the teachings of God the Father. God the Father was fed up, one might say, with the people of Israel. And he asked Jeremiah to go and tell the people that they're not doing what is right. That they're doing things that lead to corruption, greed, inattentiveness to the needs of others, like orphans, widows, the poor. And that was not the plan of God the Father to have the people of Israel move away from God. And for speaking the truth, what happened to Jeremiah? Well, the leaders, the princes, put him into a cistern, a deep well, and there he was to die and just in mud. And no one, in a sense, was going to help him except one. A court official knew that this was wrong. He went to the king, and the king said to the court official, Take three men with you and take them out of the sister, the well. And Jeremiah might have been sitting there or dying or dying if that court official did not have, one might say, the guts to stand up and say, this is wrong, this is wrong. And this is something that we need to do with our faith, stand up for our faith. So many things going on in our society today that attacks the Catholic teachings 
Christian Catholic teachings. And we stand idly by and allow that to happen. And in a sense, we stand idly by because we do not want to maybe be persecuted or even put in jail, spit upon, curse, etc., and so many other things, or even be put to death. But we need to stand up for our faith. Easy to say, isn't it? Easy to say, but extremely hard to do. Living the gospel is not always easy, and you know that. Because when we try to live the gospel, it may lead to opposition from other people, even in our families. With our eyes fixed on Jesus, and that's what we need to do, fix our eyes on Jesus, at the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, at the Tabernacle, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus, we need to walk in His direction, the light, and he will provide for us. We need to be like Jeremiah. We need to be like St. Paul. And St. Paul says, run the race, complete the race. Your faith will help you. Your faith will save you. We need to be like Jesus. To turn things upside down if we truly believe in our Catholic faith. Let's not stand idly by or sit idly by when we see things occurring. Take a good look, and I've said this before, at what you watch on TV or in the movies, especially the commercials. Pay attention. They're attacking the basic ideas of our faith. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Do you see that on TV? Do you focus on or emphasize? No. You can see the opposite. And there's so many other aspects. Pro life. Do they focus on that? No. And other things. If they do, they burn, they focus just a little bit. But they focus on the earthly things in love, our society. That's all. I'll end right there. But you need to, in your mind and your heart, reflect on these things that Jesus, you hear about today in today's gospel and in the, in the first reading of Jeremiah. Jeremiah stood up for, our faith, for his, for God the Father. Are we going to do the same thing for our faith? Please stand now and let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father. Forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Almighty Father, we, your children, place at the altar of life and needs. We ask you to hear and provide. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in leadership in the church, may God guide them in courageously living in accord with the teachings and example of Jesus, even in the face of opposition. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lead our nation, state, and local communities, may God give them a spirit of humility and generosity in leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who face persecution for any reason, may God's love strengthen them and help them find support in God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our local community who face hunger, unemployment, poverty, or discrimination, may God look graciously upon their every need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, relatives, and friends of Holy Angels Parish who do not join us in the celebration of Mass and the Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they soon rest in God's loving embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For any special intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear my prayer. Almighty God, I ask you to send your spirit upon each one of us. Move us in the direction of the life of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to live out our faith the way you wish us to live out that faith. We ask this in the name of our Savior, our Redeemer, now and forever. Amen. It's be seated as we prepare the altar for the gifts of life. We sing song number 442, Seek Ye First.
know of thy mercy who walk with thy true life and face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that we be blessed the Virgin Mary. Mother God, bless your chosen for spouse, who bless the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the age. We may marry and be co heirs to your eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Today's holy sacrifice and mass is being offered for the souls of Aaron, Bertha, and Walter, Ziegler, and deceased. Families of the singular and bizarre family. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours forever and ever. Let us pray. Please stand. May partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may bear also be his co heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And as always, we pray to St. Michael to keep the evil one away from us. St. Michael, Michael, the archangels, defend us in battle. 
be a defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, press in the hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the little souls. Just a couple of announcements. First of all, as you may, okay, uh, we'll be giving out our bulletins. There's still a lot of good information there. In the next week or two, we'll have a information on how we did with the uh, picnic. Also, this, uh, at the picnic, we had a, uh, our flea market or flea, uh, downstairs. We have a few items that are still left there. If you want to take a look downstairs, see anything, you know, that, uh, just take it home with you. Uh, if you want to leave a little donation in a basket, doesn't, you don't have to, but there are some uh, nice items there. Uh, catch your interest, just take them home uh, so we don't have to dispose of them. Also, there are like Christmas items. Rather have you take them home than Father uh, takes them over to the rectory and places it for Christmas in his rectory. He's got tons of Christmas stuff. The secretary's going to yell at me if I bring all that back over here. So, take a look, and we may have that there next week too. Okay. And we, uh, we, I want to thank Blessed Mother for good weather last week and also all of you that participated. Uh, you'll get a call, I hope, as a winner from Ms. Baza and her group today or tomorrow who won a basket or one of the big prizes. So we hope you re receive a call. You can pick them up tomorrow between 9 and 1. They'll give you more detail. Bow your heads for a blessing. Hey, Almighty God, bless you. I want to show you. May Almighty God walk with you always. And may Almighty God place his loving arms around you and hold you close to his heart. We have to be open to him. So we bless you in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. How about one more time? Amen. 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 Okay, that's good. Okay. A little bit louder next time. Okay. Okay. Are you ready?